Hey everybody, Josh at Silka here uh, with this first episode of Marginal Gains Television. So a lot of you may be finding us from the Marginal Gains podcast, uh, and for that we want to say thank you for your subscription, your listening, your reviews are amazing. Uh, we have over 10,000 subscribers uh, right now this time that we're starting the, the uh, YouTube channel. Uh, which it's just been overwhelming. Everywhere in the world I go, people bring it up. They want to talk. They want to ask questions. Um, we have really been thrilled, and so hopefully Marginal Gains TV will help us find uh, even more audience out there. Why Marginal Gains TV? Well, uh, our podcast listeners keep telling us, they say, Josh, uh, you know, I binge it when I'm in the car. I, uh, I eagerly await new episodes uh, for when I'm driving, but what am I supposed to do when I get to work? And uh, for you, we said, well, maybe we need a YouTube channel. So here we are, Marginal Gains TV, the thing you can do when you're uh, at work, as long as you don't work here at Silka, um, uh, to keep yourself entertained through the day, because it's, it's better than the news, let's be honest. So having said that, for those of you who are new to us, uh, episode one, we're going to cover what are marginal gains. This phrase has been thrown around in cycling quite a bit the last few years, really popularized around 2013, 2014 probably, uh, by David Brailsford. And if that name uh, is not familiar to you, it should be. Uh, he was the guy behind the British track uh, success at the Olympics a few years back, uh, Team Sky, uh, where he's popularized Marshall Gaines methodology and thinking, and most recently, um, really was sort of the producer, architect behind the scenes of the Kipchoge two-hour marathon uh, record sponsored by Nike. And so uh, you can see kind of in each of those, you know, you take uh, the British track team, I think hadn't won an uh, Olympic medal since the 50s, and I think they went on to win more than a dozen. Uh, team Sky has really been on top of uh, European pro teams for the last handful of years uh, and now breaking the two-hour record. So Marginal gains aren't everything, but when you've done everything else, uh, it's a really effective uh, methodology mindset to have as you uh, kind of dive into the weeds with us and really look at optimizing everything else. Um, so what are marginal gains? Well, when we say margin, uh, we kind of mean the perimeter, the edge, right? If in medicine you think, uh, you know, something in the margins you take out a, a skin cancer, we inspect the margins, right? That's the edge around uh, where that was. The, the best example I can come up with was the, the inspiration for the Marginal Gains logo, uh, which we will do some YouTube magic and have appear right here. Um, and so the inspiration for the Marginal Gains logo comes from a guy named Matt Might. And he had a child a number of years back with a unknown genetic disorder. And he and his wife decided to start encouraging people to go into uh, kind of uh, genetic science um, and get their PhDs and begin looking in these unknown areas. And he developed this series that we'll now show here where it starts like this. You say, in the beginning, everybody goes to kindergarten, right? And then we all go to primary school and we all gain this basic uh, sphere of knowledge. And so then you go to the next level of school and that sphere of knowledge grows, right? You see that there. And you can maybe grow it further, but then as you get into college, you have to start specializing. And so as you're specializing and you continue to work, you are pushing ever out further towards that margin. And the margin in this case is sort of the unknown, right? So you're, you're plowing through all of the unknown uh, knowledge, or all the known knowledge, to get to that boundary of the unknown. And then essentially, what a PhD is, is developing a thesis, right, or a, an idea, a theory, and essentially proving or disproving uh, uh, this piece of knowledge um, to bump that, and we see it right here, bump that uh, that margin out just that little bit further. And I, I really, I saw this a number of years back and I really thought it was quite beautiful in describing how human knowledge expands, right? We, we are at a point in time where a lot of the, the big easy stuff has been discovered um, and we keep narrowing down on ever finer and finer things 
Um, and, but each one of us has the power, the ability to use our brain power to bump the knowledge out just that little bit further uh, into the margin. So uh, let's look at the marginal gains logo again. You can see the idea here is if you were to push to the, the margin, push to the boundary um, on a bunch of different areas, right? And, and this can go for whatever you're into. In our case, it's cycling, but whatever you're into, you can go right to the, the boundary of the knowledge in cycling and you push it out. And we're going to push it out, say, in friction, maybe in arrow, maybe in rolling resistance, maybe in structures, um, any number of things, right? So we look at what Brailsford did with Sky. They begin pushing it out in the areas of sleep, rest, recovery, uh, hand washing, cleanliness, right? And so you, you begin to see that if, you know, say our system has a hundred components, if we were to take every one of those components and make each one of them 1% better, the whole system becomes better. Now, the challenge with this thinking is that it's not instant gratification, uh, it's not always easy, and it isn't always additive or multiplicative uh, in the way that we want it to be. So, you know, if I have a hundred a uh, hundred parts in this system, uh, and I make each one of them 1% better, the system does not become 100% better, right? The system doesn't necessarily even become 1% better. Um, some of these marginal gains, right, they're, they may be nonlinear. Some of them are asymmetric. Some of them uh, maybe contradict other marginal gains in our system. Some of them are maybe placebo, right? Some of them may be nocebo, right? Some of the things that we find that uh, may actually improve performance technically may work against conventional wisdom and cause other problems. Uh, that'd be a nocebo. We'll cover that in a future episode. So the goal here is to really kind of dive into all the areas of marginal gains we can look at, think about uh, within our cycling system, right? The rider, the bicycle, the components, um, everything in our system we're going to take a look at, we're going to take a look at how we optimize it, and then really get into where it makes sense to spend the most time, the most energy, the most effort, and most importantly, the money uh, as we optimize uh, and uh, our system to be the best that it can be using our marginal gains methodology. So I will leave you here with that uh, to say that Marginal gains is ultimately a methodology and a way of thinking that we hope to inspire within you, uh, within the teams and the athletes that we work with. Uh, I think it really has the power to change uh, your performance. Uh, and in some cases, we'll get into some, some very interesting non-cycling um, uh, anecdotes, uh, topics, areas where I think marginal gains actually has the ability to change the world. Uh, in, in maybe in some not-so-subtle ways at, at times. So thanks for listening, and uh, I look forward to seeing you again in Episode 2.